Hey, Brandon here, host of the Devi Deep Dive podcast and creator of the Devi Dashboard. Welcome to my channel and thanks for tuning in. Uh, if you're a podcast listener on my podcast, well, welcome as well. I'll most likely put this on my podcast feed. But man, it is the NFL Draft Weekend, right? Man, we've been waiting for this, especially as Devi guys. We've been watching these players for months and years and now we are finally getting landing spots. So I woke up, it's Friday morning, the day after round one, and said to myself, you know what, I'm gonna jump on the channel. I'm just gonna do a quick show here on the landing spots and give out some preliminary grades. Yes, we need to dig a little bit more. This is kind of like a first reactions show, but I am so excited about it. I had to get on and just talk to somebody, so I'm talking to the camera. Um, and we're gonna talk about the two trades that happened. Super exciting, uh, round one last night. It was great. Uh, and I'm gonna, first, let's get right into to it before we get into the landing spot grades for the rookies let's talk about the two trades that occurred and kind of what that means for the players themselves the first one was the aj brown trade to the eagles i was super excited when i heard the news because i feel that the eagles need a veteran presence in that wide receiver room so let's talk about aj brown's value it's all over twitter watched a couple other videos this morning uh short videos everyone's concerned now about aj brown's value going to the low volume passing jail and Hurts offense. I get it. Uh, Devonta Smith as well. People are now questioning the, with the split up of the targets and the run first offense. I get it. Nonetheless, as an Eagles fan for making it to another Super Bowl, I'm excited about having AJ Brown. So you're going to have to make your own decision. I'm sure he's going to see less targets. Um, but nonetheless, I know there's a lot of Jalen Hurts haters out there. I'm not one of them. I'm willing to give the man a chance. It is going to be a low-volume passing offense. I'm pretty sure about that. I'm not, I wouldn't be surprised at all in day two or day three here uh, of the NFL draft if the Eagles take a running back to, you know, to, to help out Miles Sanders as well in that power running game. But nonetheless, I think that it's going to provide a little bit more space for Devonta Smith, and I can see that them sharing targets I think AJ Brown's going to come in and demand probably that that wide receiver one on the team we'll have to see I think it could be an even split early on uh, there was certainly some chemistry with Devonta Smith and Jalen Hurts last year so but nonetheless I'm excited about um, you know AJ Brown coming to the Eagles uh, you know his value is probably depressed a little bit given the the lack of volume of targets that he's probably going to see but nonetheless as an Eagles fan I'm super excited about it you know Marquise Brown was traded to the Cardinal to the uh, Cardinals uh, for a 23rd uh, pick in the first round of the draft uh, so Marquise Brown is kind of you know a guy who now value probably has fallen a little bit right he was the wide receiver one on the Ravens last year primary target um, and now he's going to go with Dev with uh, Hopkins and Rondale Moore and of course Christian Kirk isn't there anymore so Marquise Brown probably takes a hit a little bit yeah going into maybe a higher volume passing offense but there's going to be again that target share how much of he is he going to get it uh, Kyle Murray can certainly sling the ball down the field so he may uh, you know he is going to be the dirt the deep vertical threat on that team uh, Hopkins, you know, certainly will work the boundary and the underneath and can certainly work vertical as well. But as we know, Brown is all about speed. So I think he's going to come in immediately be the Cardinals wide receiver too. So Rondale Moore probably takes a little bit of hidden value and Hopkins is Hopkins. He's the wide receiver one on that team. Hopefully he can stay healthy this upcoming season and really get back to his old form of uh, dominating. Uh, but nonetheless, I think it's a great uh, spot for Brown. Um, like I said, Murray can chuck the ball down the field. And Rashad Bateman, if you've got him, um, you're pretty excited. I I have many shares and he flashed towards the end of last year. So he should take over that wide receiver role one uh, in the Ravens this year. Um, if you're a Tylen Wallace uh, truther as well, um, you know, there's a little bit of life left there too. But again, we're only talking about day one of the NFL draft has occurred. Day two's tonight. Day three is tomorrow night, and I have a feeling the Ravens are going to dip into this wide receiver pool early on day two. So, um, But nonetheless, I think if you're Rashad Bateman, stock up. Marquise Brown probably stock down. So yeah, so what I want to do, just a really quick show right now, I just want to get in and do some really quick landing spot grades, right? Just to kind of our first blush at like our first instant reaction, right? As to, you know, the landing spots, because we've all graded these guys prior to the draft and ranked them, tiered them, whatever, however you do your ranks. And I caution everyone not to go overboard and start really re-ranking everybody right now. It's our, all your, everybody on Twitter already is putting out new ranks and stuff like that. 
you know, relax, right? Just let's absorb the whole draft. Let's get in. There's going to be some offseason, maybe some moves, some here and there. So let's see what happens. But nonetheless, we got to look at depth charts and opportunity, which really, you know, goes to target share. Super important playing in Dynasty. Obviously, we want our wide receivers to get peppered with targets, right? The passing volume of the offense, you know, what's the QB situation kind of go hand in hand. And we're going to talk about that with some of these landing spots. As much as we love the player, I've always been a believer situation matters, right? Talent always supersedes situation, yet we've seen over and over again players that may not really break out early in their careers due to poor quarterback play, run heavy offensive scheme, so on and so forth. So we're going to just kind of talk about that briefly for each one. Um, and, and the running back situation, I think, too, plays a role because uh, like the Eagles are more of a running game. I think they're going to continue to pound the rock this year and not ask Jalen Hurts to do too much. So that certainly plays a role, too. So with all those factors in mind, let's just go through the draft as it happened. Drake London goes to the Falcons, first receiver off the board. Um, I think a lot of even before the draft, everyone had, you know, Burks, uh, you know, I'm a Jamison Williams guy, uh, Wilson, uh, London, all these guys were wide receiver ones for some people, wide receiver two, but most of them, including Jahan Dotson, was, they were all our top five really wide receivers in the draft, right? Nobody really penetrated that. I'm sorry, the top six with Burks and Jamison Williams and Olave. We got to throw Olave in there too, but nonetheless... Um, so these landing spots were great. Great time last night. So Drake London gets drafted by the Falcons. Me personally, if I own the Falcons, I'm not drafting a wide receiver right now. Mariota is the scheduled quarterback to start. And it, again, we got day two tonight. They actually might go and pluck an early um, you know, quarterback. Yet, I don't see any of the quarterbacks drafted in day two being a day one starter coming this fall. So I think the Atlanta Falcons are going to be rolling the dice with Mariota again, continuing to build. Me personally, if I'm a Falcons fan, I would have built through the offensive line, the defensive line. That's where the game to me is won. But nonetheless, Drake London goes to the Falcons. I give it a grade of a C+. Plus. Um, Pitts is going to be, I still think, the primary ball carrier. Now, the volume should be there for Drake London because Calvin Ridley is is suspended for the upcoming season. Uh, Russell Gage, he signed with the Bucks, So there is nobody else on this depth chart, right? You've got Pitts and you've got Drake London. I won't be surprised, too, if the Falcons dip their toes maybe on day three for another receiver. But again, this is going to be possibly a low-volume offense um, the I anticipate the Falcons taking a running back, right? So my big question to Drake London is as good as he could possibly be, is Mariota really going to be able to get him the ball? And because London is a contested catch guy and one of the better taller guys, physical guys at the catch point, it's probably going to be pretty good for Mariota. He's going to ho- you know, hoist the ball up there and say, Drake London, go get the ball. So I think it's going to be good. I think Drake, Drake London is going to excel, obviously, in those situations. All right. Um, Garrett Wilson drafted number 10th overall to the Jets. Uh, good landing spot. I give this a landing spot of a B. Um, you know, the Jets missed out on the Tyreek Hill. I know they were very active trying to get Tyreek Hill, so they were definitely in the market for another wide receiver. Zach Wilson, if we want to see the true potential of Zach Wilson, I think the Jets did the right thing to give him another playmaker. So the real question everybody really has now is what is the value of Garrett Wilson and Elijah Moore with the Jets, right? Elijah Moore probably is going to take a little bit of a hit only because of the target share now going to be split with Wilson. I truly believe that Garrett Wilson is going to end up being the wide receiver one on this team. But I think Elijah Moore is going to be a wide receiver two uh, or one A. And I think Elijah Moore is going to go back to the slot where he really excelled at Ole Miss and Wilson will play the outside but nonetheless, two great receivers now for Zach Wilson. So, you know, stock up for, for Garrett Wilson. I think it's a good landing spot. Um, and, you know, Zach Wilson as well, I think stock up for him. Uh, he's now got another pass catcher as well. And Corey Davis is there too, who is probably at the very beginning of the downside of his career. Nonetheless, I think there's still two years, three years left of uh, Corey Davis being a fantasy dynasty asset on our dynasty teams. So I give Garrett Wilson a B only because it's the Jets, um, with, you know, and again, Zach Wilson is a little young, still learning. So we got to, uh, you know, he's still going to have some growing pains, I believe, for the next couple of years. But long term, Garrett Wilson should be the wide receiver one on the Jets. That is what I predict. Chris Olave to the Saints. This was really interesting. Um, the Saints move up to grab Olave. Um, same kind of situation where I think there were a lot of other needs on the team, but yet wide receiver. 
We know that Michael Thomas, hopefully, is coming back this year. He will be the wide receiver one, I'm assuming. But Alave is in a good spot. I give him a B plus as a landing spot grade, um, you know, because I think he's the wide receiver two right out of the gate. That's assuming Michael Thomas comes back. But even though Michael Thomas is coming back, I think Alave is going to be the new shiny toy. I think he is going to be where Winston, I'm assuming Winston is over his injury and he will be the starter. I know Andy Dalton there as well, but needless to say, Alave, if Winston is the uh, you know the quarterback to start the fall, he is going to be, you know, we know he chucks the ball down the field and Alave can get down the field. Um, so he is going to be that, you know, intermediate to deeper threat on that team. And again, there's, you know, Traylon uh, Smith, I think his name is, the other guy Callaway's on that team nice nice players but nobody that I think are going to be long-term dynasty assets for us so uh, Chris Olave good landing spot because I think he is going to be getting a lot of targets all right Jamison Williams he was my wide receiver one all right so he lands the 11th pick with the Lions give this a B landing spot I think he's the wide receiver one of this class. I think in three years from now, he is going to be super dynamic. He's going to get over his ACL injury, and he's going to be great. The Lions signed DJ Tark to uh, you know one more uh, to a one year deal. We have St. Brown there as well, and St. Brown's been a topic of conversation for you know pretty much the entire off season. Some people are out on him, saying it was a one time flash with production. He was the only guy there. Of course, I think St. Brown is going to have a reduction in targets, obviously, with Williams there. Hawkinson's there as well. Swift catches the ball out of the backfield. So, yeah, I think his target share is going to go down. But, you know, St. Brown's a great receiver, and I think he's going to then now be able to play where he really excelled at USC in the short and intermediate parts of the field and let Jamison Williams be that vertical, you know, X, Y receive, X and Z receiver, you know, on the boundary to be able to, you know, stretch the field a little bit and I'm not I'm not super down on Goff I mean I think the guy is not a great dynasty quarterback by any means but I don't think he's trash either and as we just saw from the NFL draft there's really not a whole lot of quarterbacks the NFL is gaga with over exception of of Pickett so if you've got Goff as a starting dynasty quarterback well good for you I mean you just got yourself another receiver at least to to help elevate his stacks his his stock right Um, so I think he's a little underrated Um, so but I don't think they're going to rush him back there's no need to rush him at all uh you know the, the lines are still in a in a early stages of a rebuild as far as i'm concerned so but jameson williams give that a b landing um like i said he's my favorite receiver in the draft and i'm like super excited about it all right the commanders at number 16 um you know they they, they take Jahan Dotson. I was really surprised. I didn't think Dotson was going to go this fast. I felt like there was a run on wide receivers and, you know, the commanders wanted a wide receiver and they just felt like they had to, to, to take one and, and, and go and they got one. Right. Um, I just don't love the landing spot. I give it a grade of a C. Um, Carson Wentz is there, their starter now. And again, day two, Washington might get a quarterback in this class. But like I said prior, I don't think any quarterback that's drafted day two is going to start this fall. Uh, Jahan Dotson is going to play second fiddle to Terry McLaurin. I mean, he is Terry, scary Terry, is the wide receiver one on this team. Um, but nobody nobody else had more than 400 passing yards or receiving yards last year. So it was just not a great offense in general. Um, I think they might pluck a running back to Washington as well, but you got Gibson there. It's going to be probably a run first offense. We saw what happened to Carson Wentz in, in the Colts. Um, just not, you know, wasn't really great last year. And I'm not thinking that he's going to all of a sudden be great this year. So Jahan Dotson, I think he's going to have a rough road to relevancy in our dynasty rosters. As much as I love the talent, I think the quarterback in Carson Wentz is going to hold him back a little bit. Um, Traylon Burks, all right, part of the trade with the Eagles getting rid of A.J. Brown. They immediately replace A.J. Brown with a very similar style player in Traylon Burks at number 18th with the 18th pick. I give this a B-plus uh, landing spot. Um, Robert Woods and Traylon Burks. I mean, those are the two guys that are going to be the primary, you know, receivers. Derrick Henry, this offense is always going to run through Derrick Henry. But nonetheless, I think Traylon Burks has a great opportunity to take a lot of targets. I mean, Woods is coming off his injury, but this is the shiny new toy, first round pick. All of these receivers are going to be given a chance early and often to make their mark on these teams, given that they were first round draft picks. So Traylon Burks, again, um, 
I think is just in a great situation to be a target hog for, um, you know, especially if Robert Woods, you know, he should be fully recovered from his injury. But nonetheless, I think Traylon Burks is going to be the guy that they probably try and create space for. If there was one knock on Traylon Burks, it was probably his route running. It may be a little raw nonetheless, but we know his versatility. We know his physicality, his, you know, so he kind of replaced what they sold. And they obviously didn't want to pay AJ or, uh, you know, for Brown for, you know, all that money. The Eagles signed him to a four year, $100 million contract, which I'm thrilled the Eagles did. I'm so excited. So Traylon Burks, they just said, you know what? We don't want to pay Brown, you're out, but we're going to replace you with someone that looks kind of just like you and has the same physical kind of ability and explosiveness in the, in the passing game. So B plus, I think it's going to be a good, I think Tannenhill's going to look for him early and often. Um, let's see what he can do. So, all right. Uh, the last guy we're going to talk about today is Kenny Pickett. He was drafted at number on the 20th by the Steelers. This was really an intriguing, just entire quarterback draft cycle for me. Um, I did not spend a lot of time watching a lot of these quarterbacks. There was not a consensus. And I mean, here we are after the first round of the draft and Kenny Pickett is the only quarterback. So a lot of people had Malik Willis. And for some reason, Desmond Ritter was this late, you know, the last month, you know, guy that kind of rose up ranks that he was could be the first guy taken. But Kenny Pickett from day one. I think had the apple of most franchises I, um, you know, is possibly being the, the, you know, the first guy off the board. And he lands in, for me, a great situation. I'm going to give that an A landing, uh, landing spot grade because he finds himself in a situation with a great running game. He's got good receivers. He's got a excellent organization, and I'm assuming Trubisky is going to be the guy that runs the show for this fall, at least half the season. Again, as I said, I don't think any of these quarterbacks should be going out there trotted out in September. I think Kenny Pickett would be wise. It's great. He played at Pitt. Now he's in Pittsburgh. He's a hometown guy. The whole good story feel is going to be awesome for Pittsburgh. Good for them. This is the guy that's going to take over for Roethlisberger. But I think he finds himself in a great situation. And if they're patient with him, lets him understand the playbook, so on and so forth. I think it's a great spot. So all of these guys we just talked about, I think are going to be first round picks in our rookie drafts. Um, so it's going to be really exciting tonight because we're going to have running backs that are going to go off the board. It's day two. We're going to at least probably get three running backs, maybe four or five. I don't know. But anyway, um, you know, no running backs in the first round this year. We got the six receivers and one quarterback. And I'm going to say most people thought there were probably going to be three or four quarterbacks taken in the draft later in round one. But as you see, I think the NFL tells us that these guys might not be players that we want to reach for for our dynasty rosters and in our rookie drafts coming up. So, all right, man, I'm going to try and do one of these for round two, one of these shows for round two and round three. Thanks for watching. And as always, hit that subscribe button. And... um just appreciate you giving it a watch. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.